This video is about the Fujifilm X100V. My name is Edward Lee, I'm a filmmaker and photographer, and in this video, I wanna share my thoughts on the Fujifilm X100V, but more specifically, whether or not I think this camera is overrated or overhyped just with how much buzz it's been generating lately. I've personally had this camera since the summer of 2021, and I've been using it a ton ever since. In the midst of what feels like a new camera release every single month, this camera in particular has been growing in demand. So much so that Fujifilm actually can't keep it in stock and it's been in backordered status for many months now. At a glance, this camera looks like any typical Fuji X100 camera. It looks very similar to its predecessors like the X100, the X100S, X100T, and the X100F. But to many photographers, this camera might not be that special on paper. It doesn't have interchangeable lenses, it doesn't have in-body image stabilization like a lot of the latest and greatest cameras, and this camera isn't necessarily the cheapest in the bunch, especially for a point and shoot. But once you take a closer look at this camera, you start to see why it's generating so much hype. The design is eye-catching, but very unassuming. You definitely aren't going to get kicked out of any restaurants or any places shooting with this camera just because of how small it is. The quality of this camera is top notch and all the buttons and dials on the body feel super intentional and second nature. Me personally, I've added a third party grip to mine just to add a little more, I guess, uh, size to the camera because it feels more comfortable in my hand. And there's a bunch of other third party accessories you can add to this camera to make it more ergonomically friendly. But the specific placement of the shutter, the joystick, all the dials, it feels really natural to hold, especially when you're out just shooting cameras or you need to take a quick shot of a moment. And somehow Fuji even managed to fit in a tilt out screen on this camera that somehow seamlessly integrates into the body and a lot of people might not even see that it has a tilt out ability when you first take a look at the camera. In my opinion, every great point and shoot needs to bridge the gap between image quality and ease of use. The Fujifilm X100V really bridges that gap in a way that I never expected. Personally for me, this camera always comes with me in my bag and I can confidently leave behind some of my larger cameras whenever this one is coming with me. Every photographer knows that even the most compact mirrorless cameras now, you end up shooting in RAW. And you come home, you import them, you put them into your editing software, you color them, and then you export them to post them on social or put them on your phone. The whole workflow honestly gets really time consuming at times, especially if it's not for client work or an actual important session. You just wanna take some quick photos to be able to share with friends and family. Now, I honestly don't know too many photographers who shoot on Canon or Sony who use the actual JPEGs that come out of the camera and upload those images or even have them be usable. I'm definitely included in that bunch when I shoot on other cameras. But for me, this camera, I do actually use the JPEGs that come straight out of it. I don't edit the images as much as I think I would. Obviously, I shoot in RAW as well. I shoot RAW and JPEG at the same time. But the JPEGs that come out of the X100V are truly impressive. I can't tell you how many times I've simply shot photos on this camera, then went straight to my phone and posted those photos with zero edits. Obviously the Fuji RAW files that come out of this camera are also amazing and you can really push the colors and edit and tweak the photos the way you would like, but from a convenience standpoint, the JPEGs are really great. My personal favorite feature about the images that come out of this camera is the way it handles highlights. I've used this camera in a lot of less than ideal situations, in harsh sunlight, in dark situations, in really bright situations, and just the way it handles highlights and the way it handles roll off is really beautiful. And the dynamic range that this camera has makes all the photos honestly look like it came out of some sort of like movie or some sort of frame. And I really love that about this camera. I mean, I'm not big on shooting film, but a lot of people I know that use this camera make it sound like basically the image you can get out of this camera are close to what you can get shooting film. So a lot of my friends who shoot film and they love that process, sometimes it is inconvenient. So being able to grab this camera and pull off similar photos that you would on a film camera is such a huge win in my opinion because you cannot do that with some of these other cameras in the market. 
how is it possible that this camera is able to get some photos that kind of look like film? Well, it's thanks to Fuji because they were able to put in some film simulations and some recipes pre-built into the camera. You can tweak these settings and find your own uh, recipes to emulate some of your favorite film stocks or film rolls. But for the most part, the creative looks that come out of this camera that are pre-built are seriously amazing. And I say that because Anyone who shoots Canon or Sony for photos or other cameras knows that you're not really using those creative presets that come into the camera. You're usually shooting in raw or some sort of flat or neutral profile and then you're doing all the coloring in post. But the coloring that comes out of this camera with the ones that Fuji provided are seriously amazing. My favorite one is Classic Chrome, but I'm also able to use some of their black and white presets and they are really fun to use when you're out just traveling or you're trying to get some quick moments. And I think it's because Fuji really thought about the users when it came to creating these recipes. It wasn't just slapping on a couple different saturation or contrast tricks. They actually went into grain, highlights, shadows, a lot of things that people who shoot film are thinking about, they put them in here digitally to be able to change those settings to tweak the image to the exact needs that every photographer has. The last thing I will say about how great the film simulations that Fujifilm provides are is that a lot of people ask me what preset I'm using when I post these JPEGs straight out of camera. And that just goes to show that a lot of people are wondering if I purchase presets to put on my photos, but really I'm just using the film simulations that came straight out of the camera itself, which just goes to show how impressive they are uh, from an image quality standpoint. Just want to mention that this video is also sponsored by Envato Elements. All the titles and overlays and sound effects that you're seeing in this video, I got all the assets from Envato Elements. It's so nice to be able to have a one-stop shop for all my creative assets. So Envato Elements has everything from stock video, motion graphic, font packs, um, pitch deck templates. Really the assets are endless and there's millions of things you can download on Envato Elements to use as a creative to help you in your process. The one subscription that you have will cover unlimited downloads, meaning there's no cap to how many assets that you can use for your projects. And also the subscription covers commercial usage and licensing rights. So you don't have to worry about running into any problems with using the content for a YouTube channel, for client work, for social media. So if you're a creative and you're looking to make your creative process just go a little bit smoother, or you're just looking for assets to spice up your videos or your content, I highly recommend checking out Envato Elements because it truly is a one-stop shop. Right now, you can get a seven day free trial and kind of go crazy and check out all the assets they have and use them for your project. So if you are interested in getting that free trial, click the link down below. And thank you so much Envato for sponsoring this video. I appreciate it. Fuji made it practical. With some of the features in this camera, not being able to change lenses might be a deal breaker for some, but personally, I find the 23 millimeter fixed lens on the X100V refreshing. Having a fixed lens forces me to think about my composition more, helps me see the world through a different perspective at times, and my mind isn't taken up by the fear of using the wrong lens. But when I need to get that extra reach in a focal length, the digital zoom feature is more useful than having to constantly change lenses in my opinion. I've set the focus ring on the lens to act as a digital zoom when shooting photos. This allows me to get from 23 millimeters to 50 to 70 in just seconds. Sure, it's cropping digitally and you might lose a little quality, but when you're trying to capture moments, being able to go from 23 millimeters to 70 millimeters in an instant with this small form factor is actually crazy, in my opinion. It's true that some moments are better when captured on video, but with the ability to capture 4K video in a flat color profile, this camera becomes an even better tool than documenting life. The video capability shouldn't be the reason you buy this camera because there are better options out there, but if you're looking for a designated video camera, the image quality is impressive and I've used the video function on a number of occasions to document a moment. The built-in ND filter doesn't get talked about enough in my opinion because Fuji didn't really have to add it in there. But again, they wanted to make the camera fun and easy to use. The ND filter allows you to capture video at the proper shutter speed if there's too much light. And I've also used the ND filter to capture slow shutter photos during the daytime and setting the little dial in front to my ND toggle makes it a breeze. Now, no camera is perfect and as we know, all the camera companies out there, when they come out with a new camera, they have to handicap at least certain parts of the camera so that they can sell their other cameras or other lines. And this is something that we've always known. And nothing's different about the X100V in that manner. There's certain things that make it not the perfect camera for all needs. 
And the one thing that kind of handicaps it is it doesn't have image stabilization in my opinion. Granted, it is a really small camera. I'm not expecting Fuji to fit image stabilization in something so small, but you know, putting 4K video capabilities in something of this size and then not having image stabilization kind of makes it feel like it's shooting itself in the foot. You can't really get stable video footage unless you put this camera on a tripod, but then putting it on a tripod, in my opinion, defeats the purpose of it making a running gun street photography camera. And so if there was IBIS in this, I think it would really take it to the next level from a video standpoint. Another thing that I wish this camera could improve upon is the low light capabilities. Sure, it can go up in ISO and it shoots at f2, but for the most part, if you're shooting in any ISO in the higher ranges, it gets pretty noisy and it doesn't really handle you know, highlights or all the beautiful parts of this camera don't really perform at its best in low light situations. Now, this isn't necessarily a con for some. Like I said, for me personally, I do end up adding a lot of grain to my images when using this camera. So, you know, when it's noisy, I can throw in some grain and still pull off some images. But for client work or things that do require really sharp imagery or good low light performance, this is not the best camera for that. Well, to compensate for this, Fuji did add a little built-in flash into the camera, which is great considering how small this camera is. The fact that there's a built-in flash is amazing. I've used it on a number of occasions, but because the built-in flash is so small, you know, if your subject is even more than a couple feet away, you're not gonna get the flash performance that you need. Now, this camera isn't perfect. It isn't the cheapest camera on the market, but I can honestly say that this camera has made me fall in love with photography all over again. Because for once, I bought a camera and didn't care about how many megapixels it had, which prime lenses it needs to be paired with, or more importantly, how many frames it can shoot per second. I just didn't care about any of those things when I purchased this camera. I think that's what made me fall in love with photography all over again. Because this camera is truly one that I feel very excited to pack in my bag each time I go out on a trip, or client work or anything really, any moment in life, I get very excited to bring this camera with me. And because it's so small, when I have it on my shoulder, or I'm carrying it with me, I never feel burdened by it. And honestly, even if I come home and I didn't take a single photo with this camera, I never regret having it with me or by my side. So the Fujifilm X100V for me, in terms of where it fits on the spectrum of cameras, is right in between an iPhone and a mirrorless camera. And the reason why I say that is because with iPhones, a new one comes out every year and I always say I'm gonna use it to create epic imagery, but I always get the new iPhone and I don't ever actually use it to create better photos or better videos. And with mirrorless cameras, I don't ever actually bring it with me on some of these smaller trips or travels because I just don't wanna hassle with changing lenses and doing all those things and I don't want a moment to turn into a photo session. And so that's why the Fujifilm X100V for me falls right in the middle. It doesn't bother me with notifications. I'm not using it to check social media. I also don't have to worry about changing lenses and making sure it's packed in the right bag or the right configuration. It's small enough to take with me. It takes amazing images. And it's truly one of those cameras I just throw in my bag, bring with me with no pressure. And I think that's what makes it so fun to use. Now, what I'm about to say, just take with a grain of salt because cameras are getting so expensive nowadays. But the best way I could put it is that the X100V makes me feel a certain type of way. And I think with how many cameras are coming out now in the market and all the crazy capabilities and features that these cameras offer, if a camera can make you feel a certain type of way about your art or about the way you create, in my opinion, it's the right camera for you if it makes you feel a certain type of way or makes you feel inspired. It's a feeling with this camera. Now to answer the question for this video, is the X100V overrated, overhyped? Yes, maybe, probably, but I personally love this camera. And like I mentioned earlier, it's the feeling it gives me, and for some reason, I just keep coming back to it. And I know that you'll love this camera too. If you have any questions about this camera, uh, leave them down below. If you're interested in some of my favorite third-party accessories for the camera, I'll also link those down below. But thank you so much for watching, and hopefully you enjoyed this one. We tried to put a little bit more production value behind it and spent a little more time on it with my friend Tori. So shout out Tori for helping me on this video. And yeah, see you guys in the next video. Peace.